have had it with grocery prices. I, I'm sorry. I, I got a rent this morning. I literally got a rent this morning. I can't do no coffee and chats because I ain't got no coffee. I, I, I am so tired of it not being no food. I literally just spent $338 on groceries 10 days ago, y'all. 10 days ago. I come in here to make breakfast. Ain't no biscuits. Ain't no bread. Ain't no sausage. Ain't no bacon. Ain't no water. Ain't no one applesauce is left. Like my asparagus is bad I, like what what is really going on okay because <laughs> you can't even you can't even justify i ain't got no mcdonald's money it's food at home it ain't even food at home we got nuggets no fries peanut butter no jelly ham no burger i mean seriously i can't but the gas prices the grocery prices, then y'all like, oh, you're such a good mom. Have two more kids. You gonna feed them? I'm having a day. Or I'm having a life. I don't know, man. I just don't know what to do anymore. I'm sitting outside work, crying my eyes out in my vehicle. Because I can't function anymore. Financially, I just, I don't understand anymore. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour and I can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. I, um, I can't even literally keep gas in my car to get to work three days a week because I can't afford it. Like I get paid and it goes to car, mortgage, a couple little bills. And then maybe $80 in food for the week. And I literally only buy groceries on my daughter's home now. On the weeks that she goes with her dad, which is Monday to Monday, what I've started doing is I buy a loaf of rye bread and I work really hard to keep that one loaf of rye bread lasting me the whole week and I eat peanut butter. So I'll eat peanut butter toast whenever I'm hungry and it's been fine. It's been working just fine. That's told. I'm good with that. That's fine. Um, but last week, I guess I was a little extra hungry a couple days. So I had toast in the morning and toast in the evening, which that's not in my budget. So I ran out of bread on like the Thursday or even the Friday. I don't know. Either way, at 47, I had to see if my mother could buy me a loaf of bread so that I could eat for the weekend before my daughter got home. Because if there's any food in the house, I'm not f eating one bit of it. I'm saving everything I can for her. Because then she gets home and she's not surviving a f toast. I don't give a shit. I don't give a I don't understand why things are so hard right now. I apparently make too much money to receive any financial benefits or help of any kind. I don't get GST. I don't get like the grocery benefit for single parents, even though I'm a single parent, but I apparently make too much money. I can't reach out to certain resources or any resources because I make too much money. I have to renew my mortgage for February. And I already know that my mortgage will be less, but my payments are going to be probably $400 more a month. I don't know how to budget that in. Um, are y'all okay? Like, what are we supposed to do? I've been talking to my roommate about this rent situation. Like, do we, are y'all going to go to work next week and just demand a raise? Like, how is this supposed to work with the way these prices are jumping? How are we actually supposed to keep up and pay our rent? Groceries are expensive right now. Um, gas is $4.39. Like, what the f are we supposed to be doing right now? What do I need to be doing? Like, do I need five jobs? I I serious I really need an answer. Somebody please like I wanna know how the hell people in Canada are even living. 
I generally consider myself a positive person. I'm, like, resourceful, but some stuff happened around the property, and, like, well, I know I'll never truly be homeless. Like, I, I have family to live with, and, you know, like, I have options. Like, I'm luckier than a lot of other people, but how the hell are, is anyone existing in Canada? Like, I just, I feel trapped, and, like, like, I just got a good job. I start in September, but even with that job, it pays less than 40 grand a year and it's a job that requires like education and even on that job like I still can't do shit I can't buy anything I can't afford the rent these days like I'm, I'm just I'm I'm just feeling so much despair and I know I'm normally like really really positive but I'm just like, how is everyone else and are you okay? Because the answer is probably no. I feel like I can't stay here, but I can't move anywhere else because anywhere else I move to, I'm going to be charging, like, I'm the landlords are just going to charge me like $2,500 a month in rent. Like, I'm just, I'm just feeling really overwhelmed. And I don't know. I just... At 33 years old, like, I was really hoping that I could, at the very least, afford, you know, a small house. I don't even want, I don't want 3,100 square feet. Bull I just want, I just want something small. 500 square feet. Even less. And yet, it's just, it's just, it's so f***ing expensive. Like, I don't... I don't know what I'm gonna do. I just budgeted my paycheck that I get tomorrow and I have $317 left over after my bills for two weeks. <laughs> Can someone please explain to me why all I do is eat, sleep, and go to work, yet I'm always hungry, tired, and broke? Is anybody else broke as right now like me? Yes, girl. Yes. We are all broke. I just opened up a new credit card yesterday just to make sure that we can have groceries this month. Opened up a new credit card, racked it up, maxed it out to make sure that we have food for the month. All right, man, I got to talk to y'all about this because somebody got to explain to me what is going on with the inflation nowadays. I just went to Subway, wanted to get a 12 inch foot long, right? Now, I haven't had Subway since high school. Back then when I used to eat it, that was when it was the five, five dollar, you know, five dollar foot long. So I remember I would get my regular buffalo chicken with pepper jack toasted. I used to get chips. I used to get drinks. I used to get a cookie all for like eight, nine dollars at absolute most. OK, tell me why I go to Subway. I go in there. I just want the sandwich foot long. Add my toppings. The woman goes and says 11. 92 almost $12 that's a dollar an inch so then I I looked a little confused and I think she kind of saw that so I'm like oh no I don't want the meal I just want the sandwich she's like I know 1192 at this point I'm visibly looking like I'm like upset I still paid but I had a $10 bill so I had to put that back in my pocket and pull up my card 1192 $12 for a sandwich guys and just the other day I went to Walmart to buy a 60 count eggs $25 yeah, I don't know, man. Something's got to happen with this inflation. I can't go out to eat. I can't eat at the grocery store because everything is so expensive. And for being a bodybuilder who's got to eat like four, five, six times a day, bro, this is just getting out of hand. At this point, bro, I'm just going to stop eating and lose a bunch of weight because this is getting crazy. I don't understand how to, like, save money on bills and gas. And I, like, I don't get it. I just got my bill through and I was so excited to open my bill this month because I've tried so hard. I've had my heating off the whole of it is so cold in my house i'll show you my thumbs right now it's 12 degrees in my house it's 12 degrees in my house i have a baby i have a freaking baby and it is 12 degrees in my house 12 degrees i cannot afford to put the heating on i get a letter through the day door today i was not having the heating on for a whole month to try and save money and the bill is more expensive than it was last month i've somehow used more gas i don't get it I take really short showers, like as short as I possibly can. I try and do as little loads of washing as possible. I use, I boil the kettle to do the water for the washing up. I don't use the bath, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So if anyone please has any tips on how 
how, what I'm doing wrong. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And I don't know how to fix it. And I, I just want a warm house for my baby. That's all I want. And I, Guys, I don't know how the average American is making it right now. For example, if you want to rent an apartment, the landlord wants proof of income three times the rent. And out here in northern New Jersey, that means a one bedroom, you got to be making 30 to 50% more than the national average. Groceries have gone up like crazy. It's like, it seems like it keeps creeping up ever so slightly, but after three, four months, you feel like it's, it's a, it's a, you know, you feel the increase. Last year, I would be shopping for myself alone twice a week and it would run me about 80 bucks each trip. Now it's costing me like 125 to 140 per trip. But people are walking around like nothing's, uh, nothing's wrong. Everything is fine. Everything is dandy. But it won't be long before people are going to have to decide whether to pay the rent, pay the mortgage, or feed their families. And of course, people are going to choose to feed their families. Okay, excuse the absolute f state of me. But this is real life. This country is on its f arse. How they are expecting people to be able to afford to live is beyond me right now. So just to give you a little idea... By the way, I know I am not by any means the worst off right now. I am a single parent. And when I say single parent, I mean living on my own with two children. I am lucky that I have the other parent who helps provide things for me, which is why I'm saying I know there are people that are in worse off situations. I am trying to keep a home. I am working full time. I... I'm sorry, I'm getting really emotional about this today. Whew. I am working 40 hours a week to provide for my kids. I get bare minimum help from the government. I am making what I would class as a really f good wage. And about 90, 95% of that is getting paid on bills. I have so many f bills to pay. And honestly, we're just surviving and, and like, barely, barely surviving. I have rent, I have council tax, I have car payments, I have the cost of the, the kids. It, like, how, how are people supposed to survive like this? Because every single morning every day i'm waking up going right what have i got to pay next what have i got to pay next and constantly constantly looking back and forth at my bank checking how much money i've got left and usually about two weeks before the month's ending i'm, I'm absolutely and i shouldn't be living like this i work my arse off for what and they wonder why so many people are on benefits or not working do you know what? I would probably be so much better off not working because my rent would be paid, my council tax would be paid, everything I would get help with. Honestly, I don't even, I don't even know why I'm coming on here doing this, but I'm just so stressed and I just wanted to show real life that this is what it is. People are stressing out and getting mentally unwell because we're having to struggle to pay for basic things. Okay, I have literally recorded this like three times because I'm so angry. So I'm just gonna say this. If someone in your family or one of your friends says to you that they are broke and they cannot afford something, the most inappropriate question you can ask is why and how? How are you broke? Why do you still broke all the time? I don't know, bitch. Maybe because my entire fucking check goes to daycare. And then the $100 I have left after I pay daycare, I have to pay my other fucking bills with. Or I have to get groceries. Or I have to put gas in my car. And my check is so consumed by bills that when my husband gets paid, half of his shit goes to bills. And then the other half, we have to fucking survive on. So no, bitch. I don't have any fucking money. I'm broke. 
So I'm not going to be coming to family events. I am not going to be buying your kids birthday presents because I can't even afford my own kids fucking birthday presents. Don't ask people why and how they're broke. Read the fucking room. Okay? Read the room. What's up, TikTok? You know what I hate? Being rent broke. And what I mean by that is you spend all this money to live in an apartment, X amount of dollars a year, but then you go apply for a home loan and your credit's not a 700 or 800, you get denied. It's crazy, it's crazy. Three years, paid over 100K to live in an apartment. They want to go buy a house got two sustainable incomes and it's still not enough it's still not enough and after the whole pandemic you're stuck in this renter slash home buying thing that doesn't even make sense everybody's being outbid say you want to go buy a house that's 400k you're not gonna get it first time home buyer never purchased a home still can't get there gonna need sixty thousand dollars down but it's okay for me to spend a hundred thousand on an apartment for three years rent's too high cost of living's too high especially in new jersey where do you have time to save regular bills daycare everything that's there and listen, I'm blessed. I got, I got more than most, and I'm proud of that, and I'm thankful. But this housing market and renting, it's almost impossible to get out of this limbo that I'm stuck in. You think about moving down south, and the prices down south are just as expensive here, or you move, and you're not going to make the money that you're making here. So it's like you're double stuck. Leave New Jersey, go take a 50% pay cut, and then you're back at square one. That's it, though. Rant over. Going to buy soon until I get outbid. And uh, yeah, that's the moral of the story. Make better decisions when you're younger. Because I know I for sure hell should have ran over. Come pay rent with me and have a panic attack. I woke up and I was like, man, why am I nervous? It's because I have to basically pay my entire month's paycheck to rent today. And I know what you might be thinking. It's not that bad. It's just a number on the screen. No, because I don't have enough numbers on the screen. Every month, it just feels like I work, I work, I work, and I can't afford to live, live, live. Or live, love, love, as some may say. Anyways, after I got ready today, I was like, you know what? Just get it over with. Like the money is in my account. I had to transfer it over from my savings, which I really Really didn't want to do in order to pay my rent this month and then on top of that i have a car payment that i need to pay as well today and for my financial stance i just like to pay everything all in one day so i don't have to worry about it the rest of the month it's a clear statement the first of the month i pay my credit card i pay my car i pay my insurance and i pay my rent all on the first of the month. I literally was having a panic attack this morning and I just I just feel like I'm never doing enough and I'm never enough and I will never have a savings and I'll never be able to buy a house. And I was just going down the rabbit hole this morning. Then to make matters worse, I go to have some grapes this morning and then I open up my Sam's Club grapes and why are they all freaking expired? I literally bought them two days ago and then I was like, what can make me feel better? And I always know that putting on any colored hokas will make me feel better. I put on my orange Clifton's this morning and I just said, let's get on with the day. It literally sucks that I have to work three jobs because of inflation and the only thing that brings me joy that I'm willing to like spend extra on is like curbside like right now the extra 2% because I'm so tired and stressed out from working so much you know like working a full-time job and then two side jobs because I'm in a single family household and it's so hard because like you need multiple people to live you know and I'm grateful like I'm so grateful and appreciative of the opportunities that I've been given as far as like job wise and being able to you know afford things for my daughter and I but it's really stressful like it's taking a toll on me like 
I've been having like chest pains, you know, and I don't know if it's like from stress and stuff and I'm trying my best to like enjoy life when I have a break and I don't know y'all. I don't know. It's, it's scary. Neils are so pissed off. It's because we were lied to. You told us if we put our head down, we did what was expected of us. We were yes men. We would be rewarded by our companies. And to be fair, I do work for a good company. I'm not trying to bash them. But we just had our end of the fiscal year town hall meeting in which I found out I got a 4% raise and I should be happy because some people might not get any raise at all depending on their situation except i also got a notice today that my rent is increasing by 12 percent do you see how that doesn't add up well four percent increase over a 12 percent increase and that is just one bill that is just rent that is not food gas anything anything else Guys, I don't know how the average American is making it right now because from the looks of it, things are just going to hell. For example, if you want to rent an apartment, the landlord wants proof of income three times the rent. And out here in northern New Jersey, that means a one bedroom, you got to be making 30 to 50 percent more than the national average. Groceries have gone up like crazy. It's like it seems like it keeps creeping up ever so slightly, but after three four months, you feel like it's it's a it's a you know you feel the increase, because last year, I would be shopping for myself alone, twice a week, and it would run me about eighty bucks each trip. Now it's costing me like hundred twenty five to hundred forty per trip, and when I include going out maybe once or twice a week to eat my my total for food is coming out to be crazy it's over a grand and i know it wasn't like that growing up you know it's, it's gotten out of hand but people are walking around like nothing's uh nothing's wrong everything is fine everything is dandy but it won't be long before people are going to have to decide whether to pay the rent pay the mortgage or feed their families and of course, people are going to choose to feed their families. And so, who knows what's going to happen. But I was at the mall the other day, and it was pretty packed. But there wasn't really that many people holding bags. It was just people hanging around window shopping, which doesn't mean squat. It just means people want to get out of the houses and hang around, maybe eat at the food court. And, and that the food court was popping, of course. But... We're going to have to wait and see. I, I foresee a lot of, a lot more shoplifting, a lot of stores going out of business because of that, and there's going to be a lot of break-ins, a lot of cars being stolen, a lot of, a lot of parts being stolen, wheels, catalytic uh, converters, uh, which is already happening, but it's going to like, you know, more and more people are going to want to do it because they have no other way more and more people are going to turn to scamming and stealing and all that stuff because things have gotten so expensive. So we'll see. What's the solution? I really, the only solution is for the banks and the Federal Reserve to forgive all debt. That's the only way. There's no other solution. Even if we, we took 20 nations to war and gave them money to buy from us, it still wouldn't help the situation. I was talking to a coworker today about how stressed and anxious I've been lately about money because our family budget has been so tight lately and it just really has made me anxious. And she thanked me for being so honest and kind of normalizing it for her because she's also been feeling that way. So I figured why not talk about it and maybe normalize it for everybody else. Um, we are a two income family. I consider us to be very middle class. We don't live an extravagant lifestyle. We don't have an extravagant house or vehicles. Um, but our our budget has been really tight and it's really stressing me out. I don't have any advice. I just wanted to kind of share that we're going through that um, and maybe it'll normalize it a little bit for everybody else. And now I'm taking all three of my kids to the dentist and if you live in the United States, you know how stressful that is because who knows how much that's gonna cost. So 
just sending love if you're struggling too. I hate wearing makeup because I literally cannot stand taking it off. It's, I hate it. So let's remove our makeup together. So I'm gonna give my hands a quick wash, scrub a dub. I look like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm so stressed about paying rent tomorrow. It's first of the month and I, I just can't, I can't. I literally cried to my mom. I cried and ah, I'm already stressed about paying my car tomorrow. This is literally how I feel. And then I typically just pay my car too when my rent's due. So I'm literally out like my entire monthly paycheck in about one day. And then I was crying to my mom on the phone because I was like, mom, I have to afford food. And she's like, well, have you tried Aldi? And I was like, have I tried Aldi? Yeah, I have. I'm just a first year teacher on a first year teacher budget. Hardcore. Because we were supposed to get paid for covering other classes. And typically... It's on our paychecks, but for some reason, it's not on this one. And of course, it's the one that I need it most. And I'm just like, oh. I'm just really thrown in a tizzy right now. And then like, I'm trying to sell all this stuff on curtsy because I was like, I literally have a shopping problem and it's just like becoming a lot right now. And I think I'm also just in a, I forgot to take my little anxiety meds for like two days, which could definitely describe why I feel like I'm having like a literal manic episode. I don't know guys, I just don't know anymore. I'm feeling stressed and I can't take ashwagandha because that literally, don't take ashwagandha and like SSRIs. I was going to, cause I was like, oh, ashwagandha would totally help me in this situation. No, it wouldn't because it would basically like counteract my freaking meds. Just, just stressed, I'm okay, just stressed. It's a season of life, I'll be okay. I'm gonna be okay, I'm gonna pay rent, it's gonna be fine. I was hungry and now I'm not because I don't trust. I'm gonna be okay. You know, I really try to keep it cute. I try to be understanding, be an adult about this whole inflation situation. But at this point, they're playing in our fucking faces. So originally, I was seeing stuff go up 20, 50 cent or whatever. But what I really want to talk about is honestly the price of French fries and tater tots. Tater tots, more importantly. They were $2.99. Then they went up to $3.29, which was okay. They are now $5.99. $5.99 in the stores. And I am at my wit's end. I'm finna just... I Anybody else think it's like fucking asinine to see all these buildings and all these apartment complexes being built? It's like, okay, first of all, nobody can afford to move into those places. And uh, there's a lot of apartment buildings that are vacant, that are brand new, that are vacant. And this one is like, you see, I see them all over the city I live in. And it's just like, that's just going to be another one that's vacant. And then at the bottom of them, they have commercial spots where you can rent and open up your business. But people can't afford that rent to run a business. So it's like, it's just a giant fucking building taking up space that priced people out of the homes that were there before just to erect a giant building that's completely vacant just to take up space. It's like, you guys are just building shit for no reason and it's fucking up the traffic in the city and when i drive by and i see that it's just another commercial building it's just another building that has a bunch of vacant homes in it like it's point i worked 10 days in a row and i had one day off and on that day off i had to go to the dentist i had to go grocery shopping i had to get my house sprayed i had to do a bunch of fucking shit that one day off isn't really a fucking day off I work 10 days in a row and my savings still isn't where I want it to be. My money is nowhere where I want it to be. I have never been out of Florida. I finally booked a fucking trip, but that just goes to show you we can't afford to travel. We can't afford to eat. We can't afford the roof overhead. I have four pets. I can barely afford them anymore. I've had my bunny for six years and it was like nothing to feed her back then. It's now like 50 bucks just to feed a fucking bunny. Tell me why we are disagreeing with this. Why are we just doing this? What? When is it going to change? And what are we going to do to change it? Because we need a fucking solution. I'm not going to continue to work all this fucking days just to barely get by. There's no point in it. There's no point. All right, guys. Show of hands. Who's out there that's an adult right now who makes enough to pay their bills, but not quite enough for everything else and might need some government assistance? You are staring at the face of food stamps. Yes, I am sorry, my lovely friends, that from your taxes, 
you are feeding this poor skinny bitch. But for those of you who don't know, I've never been on food stamps. Um, my food stamps were supposed to come in yesterday. I currently have no money for food. And I called them, I'm like, hey, so I'm having some issues. The lady on the other end looks it up. Oh, okay, we see the blah, 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 blah. You're all good. Your case was redetermined. Um, it looks like there's just a little glitch in the system and it should probably come in tomorrow. I can't buy groceries till tomorrow. It's not a big deal. My daughter has enough, but I don't. Oh, I don't remember my subscription costing this much. Oh, we're increasing prices. I don't remember groceries being this expensive. We're increasing prices. Oh, it's a letter. Wait, what's happening to my rent? I'm increasing prices. So the cost of everything is increasing. Does that mean my pay increases? Absolutely not. I saw this TikTok the other day about how we all feel broke and they were saying that um, during the Great Depression, the average American was making $4,300 a year, which is the equivalent of like $95,000 by today's standard. So I had to go look that up. I had to do my own research and this is what I found. So I found this list of the cost of things in 1938, which is at the very end of the Great Depression, okay? So you can see the list. Now I'm gonna tell you what that actually amounts to in today's numbers. So the wage for one year in 1938 was averaging $1,731, which is the equivalent in today's standard of $37,193. So that was where I was having a big disbelief was in the amount of wages that they made in the Great Depression versus today. Because I make more than that, but it's saying that the national average is $63,400 for today. Now, while I can buy that 37,000 is uh, not a lot of money by today's standard, um, here's where the real kicker is. In the Great Depression, a house cost $3,900. That amounts to an inflation rate of $83,000, where in actuality, houses are averaging over $420,000. Yeah. That's why we feel broke. Oh, but it gets even worse because cars in the Great Depression cost $860, which amounts to about $18,000. But in actuality, cars are going for over $40,000 now. Here's the big one. $420 a year for tuition at Harvard, which should be $9,024. Now that's about what an average college costs these days. Harvard? today is $54,000 a year. So during the Great Depression, they had to spend two and a quarter times their salary in order to get a house. And by today's standards, you have to spend six, almost seven times your salary to get a house. A car costs less than half of their salary, whereas T by today's standards, uh, you, you are spending almost your whole salary for a year buying a car. I was basing all of those numbers off of people who make $63,000 a year, which does not include me, which is why I and so many of my friends feel broke. <laughs> I know it's going to fucking collapse, and this month just confirmed it. Now, I wholeheartedly hope it doesn't happen, but... It's basically a bad breakup with the United States now. Like, we see the signs, y'all. The red flags are there. They're there. They don't give a fuck. Let me show you exhibit. Okay, so this is just the article I find talking about BRICS. BRICS is just the international trading organization. That's how we trade goods or whatever. But just in layman's terms, recently within the past few days, Biden is under hot fire because BRICS is voting out the U.S. dollar as the main currency when it comes to trading and since it has officially been voted out i believe it's officially been voted out now 55 dollars of our money is only going to create to one bricks money which means it's going to cost way more to get goods from other countries now which means the prices for us is bound to go up like i don't know honestly i don't even trust the fucking government to do anything about it at this point because not only that but look at what these bastards did they voted that food isn't even a human essential right hold on hold on
So you can Google this for yourself to find the government website, but I put this up here because it looks plain and simple. They said that the position that attain of any right to adequate food, a right to be free from hunger is a goal or aspiration to be realized progressively that does not give rise to any international obligations. So basically they voted no because they didn't want other countries to come the fuck in and feed us. That, that to me is, oh, that ain't even all. Like the price of rent is going up. I see more and more homeless people on the, on the way home to my crib. Rents like damn near 5k in some areas if not more people are going homeless hungry and they don't give a fuck they've shown this even with the fucking writer's strike even with the writer's strike here we go talking about the uh writer's strike the ignorant bastard talking about starve out strikers um to make sure they come back to work for less pay or whatever basically that's how millionaires think they don't give a fuck about anybody else this damn generation of baby boomers and the motherfuckers before the rich fuckers they don't give a damn about nobody that's why they told us millennials at a young age that we wasn't gonna have a retirement plan we paying for y'all we we were never taken into account when it came to our fucking future and what even to this day what are they telling us to do work harder get a hustle you're not working hard enough you're not doing this that and now they tell us well you might as well learn agriculture uh, skills and start planting shit y'all didn't even teach us shit you didn't even teach us how to fucking plant you didn't even teach us anything and now you just expect millennials to just they don't care and i'm just so fucking done i'm, I'm done i'm done i'm done i haven't lived in the united states right now currently based on inflation this home that you could buy for $1,785 in 1929, this home came with everything you needed to build a house, plumbing, electric, wiring, trim, paint, everything. You had to build it, but it was $1,785. That's a four bedroom, one bath home. That home based on inflation should be $30,769.47. According to money.cnn.com, the average four bedroom home in the United States right now costs $363,401 or 11.8 times the inflation rate. So how, how did that happen, right? Inflation says that that house should be 31 grand. Anyway, let's look at some st statistics in the United States right now, kind of associated with 31 grand. The average compact car right now costs $26,000. So you could buy that. Uh, midsize car, 32 grand, too much. Couldn't afford that, right? That house should be cheaper than a midsize car. Student loans, $37,338, also more. Food to feed a family of four, $12,565, or about two years of food costs for a family of four is what that house should cost. Average child care expense, $14,760, and that's for one child. So if we multiply that by two for two children, it should cost you about one year of child care to buy that house. Here's a crazy one. Taxes to, to take care of a homeless individual, thirty dollars to $50,000 a year today is what it costs to house a homeless individual in the United States. But based on math and based on the government's own calculation to calculate inflation, that four bedroom, one bath house should cost $30,769.47. Okay, so minimum wage. What's the issue? People still think it should be higher. Why are we even considering this? Minimum wage jobs aren't even hard. Exactly. See, they shouldn't be able to live off unskilled labor. That's what I've been trying to get across to the voters. I worked at a grocery store when I was 16 and I barely had to do anything. Wasn't that the store your parents owned? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Cost of living has gone way up. It's the same cost of living for us. Filling up my Lexus is like a hundred bucks now. If you want more money, just go get a different job. But don't we like need people to do these jobs for society to function? Well, yeah, but they can't expect to get rich off it. We get paid the way we do because we have more responsibility. We work harder. Weren't you in the Hamptons for the last month? I'm allowed to take a break every now so and then. So you recently went shopping at the grocery store and you spent a bunch of money and then looked in your cart and found it very barren for the money you spent. You filled up your car only to stare in horror at the final number at the pump. You've been hit with a massive rent increase from your landlord or are desperately praying it doesn't happen as you see how expensive rents are around you. Or you're a young family who went to invest in your first home only to find that even trash properties are far beyond your price range. 
Why is this happening? It's happening because the US government doesn't give a shit about you. You're a consumer and you are on the money side of the wealth triangle, which means you primarily work for money and spend money and don't have a lot of capital that you can apply to your life or your financial well-being. Because they took care of the people who had capital. That's why the US government printed more money in the last two years than they have in the last several decades combined. This is why they reduced banking regulation and now banks don't have to hold 10% of the deposits that enter their building, thus allowing them to basically loan money indefinitely. It was to support the capitalist people, the people who actually have capital, which means wealth that they can apply and invest. Because they're the royalty in the American system and you are the peasant. And the people who work from capital aren't going to feel this inflation lift at all. It's all going to be on you. They're not going to feel it because they own the gas station. So when gas goes up, they raise their prices. They make the same money, maybe even a little bit more. They own the grocery store. So again, they're going to be the ones raising prices as basic consumer goods go up in value. And the reason inflation can go crazy like this is that our money is not tethered to any tangible wealth which was done so we could continue to build capitalism as a forward expanding credit system on the wealth we felt we could create, which means money is ever manipulable. When it goes through a manipulation, well, it's just up to the peasants to burden it until their paychecks catch up. God knows how long that's gonna take. In my three bedroom, two bath house, my landlord is increasing my rent from $2,000 to $2,500. That's a lot of money, might as well go buy a house. Okay, you want to buy a house? You're going to need $15,000 as your down payment, another $10,000 for closing costs. Oh, and your mortgage is going to be around $3,100. It's so expensive to buy a house. I'm just going to renew my lease and buy sometime in the future. So you want to renew your lease after all. But well, now it's going to be $2,700 because you missed the deadline to renew in the $500 promotion. I wonder if my landlord is going to take after pay or Klarna this year coming for my rent. Because it's 2023. Like, get with the program. We're still with the split payments. I'm just saying, I got all of it. Quad pay, what? Like, sizzler. All right, I'm going to try to get through this without crying. This is like the fourth time I've tried to make this video. But how in the hell is everybody making it? Like, I don't understand. Like, me and my boyfriend, we both work. We work our asses off. I am five, almost six months pregnant. Um... The house we were living in our, was a family member of a friend that we know. And she was moving back, was not planning on telling us, was just going to move in and say, oh, you can room with us. So we had to move. We are now staying with my boyfriend's father. Um, we are trying to close on a house right now. But our rate didn't get locked in. So... We weren't going to have to pay closing costs, but, but interest rates decided to hike. So now we have a week to come up with $2,500. I have tried finding a second job working from home because I, I, I don't have a car. I lost my I lost my car. I had to get rid of it um, because of COVID. I got I got sick and got behind, and it was either a roof over my head or a car. And I work from home right now, so it wasn't a big deal. My boyfriend's got his car, um, but he does have to use that to get to and from work, so that kind of limits me on getting a second job. Um, it's just, I. I don't know how the hell we're going to do it. I don't know how anybody does it right now. So I'm walking around Costco here and I'm noticing these prices. For example, these mattress lentils, $15.99. I bought those a year ago for $6.99. I keep getting told that we got, you know, 6 7% inflation. You got to be kidding me. Let's look at what else we got going on here. We literally bought this chicken broth, $5.69, two months ago. Dang, this is the flour we were buying for $5.99 last year.
Are you guys old enough to remember the $5 footlong? I got a straight up plain old roast beef footlong combo today in Seattle, Washington. Any guesses as to how much this bitch set me back today? Almost $22. $100,000 is no longer enough to feel financially secure in many parts of the country. Great. Cost of living has soared. Inflation is rising at a terrifying rate and wages, of course, are not. And data actually shows that earning $100,000 in a high cost of living city like New York or San Francisco only equates to $35,000 of purchasing, pow purchasing power after you adjust for cost of living and taxes. In slightly less expensive cities like DC or LA, this only increases to $45,000. If you make a hundred grand, you probably can afford to save some money for retirement and cover your basic necessities, have a little fun here and there. But apparently now we all need to strive for $300,000 to be able to afford the same cushy lifestyle that a hundred thousand dollars used to buy. Ugh. Hey friends, I just wanted to update you guys on the cost of living situation here in New York City. Um, just like a quick reality check. So currently as of June, 2023, uh, the average price of a studio apartment in New York City is $3,500 about, okay? Average price, studio apartment, that means like you're living in one big box with a bathroom. You don't have your own room, right? Studio apartment, okay. In order to rent an apartment in New York City, you must be making at least 40 times the rent. Now, people will say, oh, 30 to 40 times, 30 to 40 times. No, ask your realtor, argue with your realtor and not me, okay? 40 times the rent. Now, if you're not making 40 times the rent, you can always have like a co-signer. They call it something different, but you always have like a co-signer, but they must be making 80 times the rent. So that's probably not an option if you're not making 40 times the rent. You probably don't know somebody making 80 times the rent. Okay. Now, 80%, even if you didn't know somebody, 80% of New Yorkers' salaries fall between the range of $35,000 and $150,000. And you must be making at least $140,000 to rent a studio apartment in New York City right now. So what you're telling me is about 80% of New Yorkers cannot afford to rent a studio apartment in New York City right now. So why am I even talking about this? Um, honestly, I just feel like we're being gaslit into thinking that we are not in a recession i'm into believing we're not in a recession like i feel like we just keep being told oh people just don't want to work and blah 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 and all this crazy stuff um people are getting laid off every single day there are no jobs available like it is actually hard out here so if you're feeling it i feel you right it's not just you it's actually hard out here we are currently in a recession um and it's tough especially if you live in new york city new york city is the most expensive city in the world in the world not in the u.s no no in the world it's the most expensive city in the world um so if you're feeling it if you're living with your parents if you're feeling like a bum right now you're not a bum it's hard times baby Hi guys, yeah, you read that caption right. Pack with me to move back into my parents' house. I'm about to be 27 and I never thought I'd be in this position, but it's okay. I moved out of the house when I was 18 to go to college. My parents paid for my school, but since it was my decision to leave, they said that everything else was gonna be on me. And I did it, y'all. I paid my rent, my groceries, any furniture. I joined a sorority that I paid for too, which will explain my addiction to graphic tees. Then I graduated college, got a big girl job, got my own apartment, and was living my best life. I decided to take the opportunity of a lifetime in 2021 and move out from Dallas, Texas to San Diego, California. And it was the best decision of my whole entire life. This is me realizing that I also have way too many sweaters for California. As fun as these past two years have been, I've gotten myself into a little bit of trouble financially. And let me just preference by saying that I've never been the best at saving money, but I've always been able to take care of myself. I got a part-time job back in January because finances were getting a little tight, but then ended up being let go from my corporate job back in March. Luckily, because of my serving job, I was able to pay rent, still go to Coachella, and still go to Spain. But I haven't been looking for a job in the process because I honestly don't know if I can go back to corporate America. My lease was always ending in July, and my plan was to move back to Dallas. 
but since I lost my job and I don't really have a source of income and won't serve in Texas, my parents have generously offered their home while I figured this out. And again, even though it's not where I thought I'd be, I'm trusting God and I'm trusting the universe. And I haven't been home in nine years, so this might be fun. So here's to the beginning of that journey.